The last time you saw this car all together, it was running, and now it's obviously not. Like I said in the last video, there's a couple things, actually there's a lot of things that I want to do in order to get it to run 100% correctly. First thing is going to be carb rebuild. I'm hoping the one that it has on there will be rebuildable. If you notice, it's a different color than a normal Quadrajet, which to me says that it's been rebuilt by one of those um, large companies that just, you know, slam carbs together and sell them. I'm pretty sure I'm going to find some nasty surprises in it. I also want to see these fuel lines. I want to reroute them so they run a different way than what they are now because they're really close to the header. That's not something you want. Next, I have a new water neck and thermostat. I have new radiator hoses. I have new belts. Um, obviously going to put a new cap and coolant on it. I'm planning on pulling the radiator out and the reason being is because this radiator support you can see down in there it's rusty and I have another one to replace it with and I figure now is as good a time as any to do that plus I can pull the radiator out and I will be able to replace the cooler lines if they're bad but also flush it. I also plan on replacing the water pump just because it's accessible in here I do want to show you one thing. So this car had this stupid flex fan crap on it and a spacer to make it fit, but check this out. Like whoever put it on, they stripped out three out of the four bolts going into the water pump. And it's like, really? I mean, how hard is it? Why do you need three washers and a lock washer? Anyway, it's just really kind of stupid, but it will eventually all be fixed and all be looking good. realize whoever had this car before put orange coolant in it I don't know why in the world anybody does it anyway after the block gets flushed it's definitely gonna have green coolant in it again with the radiator removed you can see just how bad that radiator support is basically the bottom edge is just gone now to remove it it's fairly simple there's a bolt there's a big bolt right there then right there, I've already removed them. Next you have a support rod which goes from this part up to the front of the nose, up behind the hood. You can see it right here. Mine broke off, but luckily I have another because I have parts cars. Then last but not least, there's six bolts, three on each side. One there, one there, and one there. The way you get to those is through the wheel well. It's easier to take the tires off and do it, but if you have two long extensions, you can do it with the tires on. And then once you get all of those bolts out, this radiator support basically just comes right out. Here's the new slash old slash new one that I have. It's not rusty besides surface rust, so that's why I'm going to use it. You check the corners, that's where they like to rust. So what I think happens is water, see how this basically two pieces of metal pressed together? Water gets in this gap, comes down here, and then just pools, and then rusts from the inside out. Almost all of them I've seen have done that. Here's a better view of the rust. You can see right through that. I can't leave something like this in the car. If I find something like this, I have to replace it. Even though it costs me more money, I have to do it. So, yep, take a look at the difference in corners. This one's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than the other one. Look at that. This is a common rust place. If you have a Corvette that has a rusty radiator support, it's not that big of a deal because it's not that hard to replace. It's really the frame and the birdcage that are the important ones to make sure that are clean. I'm going to transfer, or at least try to transfer, this top hood seal over to the other one and there's a couple seals on the back. I have new brackets for the new rubber bushings for the brackets on the bottom that will go in as well and I will put it back in and it will be much better than it used to. It's always good when you can start putting stuff back together on a car instead of taking it out. Luckily this is pretty much the last thing or the last thing to take out and the first thing to put back in when it comes to redoing the cooling system on this 74. Upon first inspection of the carb, I can tell somebody's been in it. 
and the reason why is because there's different style screws in uh, the top plate see here's a flat blade flat blade Phillips Phillips so somebody's been in it that's not a good sign but hopefully I can fix any of the damage they've done there was a lot of uh, a lot of varnished gas inside the intake and I have a feeling that inside this carburetor is going to be the same kind of thing. I got the carb apart. It's not as dirty inside as I thought it was. I know it's been, somebody's been inside of it before. There's a couple of new parts, but I want to show you guys. I hope this shows up. So when I move the float up and down, the needle doesn't really move. It's pretty stuck. It's probably varnished into place. Yeah, that's a new kit part right there. So, someone's been in it before. It should run better than it does, that's for sure. Part of disassembling the cooling system was the thermostat housing. I had to break the old housing with a hammer in order to get it loose and then from there after I had snapped the bolts off. And then from there after I snapped the bolts off I had to heat these up with fire with a torch basically in order to get them free. But now they're out and I have a new housing for it. But one thing I want to do before I put everything back together. I want to flush all the old orange coolant out. So I have my garden hose and I have a bucket. So I'm going to spray water in the thermostat opening and then watch the water coming out of the water pump. And once the water is no longer orange and is clear, that means I have flushed all the coolant out of the block. Then from there, I'm going to add 50 50 green coolant which will mix with the water from the hose and it will be just fine. That's the plan. Before I assemble all the cooling system, one thing that you really should do if you're going to do this kind of cooling system job is replace these transmission cooler lines if you have an automatic transmission. I mean, you can tell they weren't leaking, but they were close. And if you see these lines on them, these three lines, that means it's factory tube. And it's just, you know, it's from 1974. It's no good. So I have new transmission cooling lines, top and bottom. I had spare pieces of 3 8 transmission lines in my parts, so. It didn't cost me anything but a little bit of time, and I reused the hose clamp. So that is something that the next owner will not have to worry about. Now, with that out of the way, I can go ahead and put everything back together and fill it back up full of nice, brand new green coolant. The mailman delivered some goodies today. We have four brake hoses. Later in the video, or later in the next video, I'll talk about the brake system, but those need to be replaced. I bought a new lower radiator hose. I didn't buy an upper one because the upper one on here looks pretty new. It's definitely not original. The lower one for sure was. So that's going to get replaced. I bought, uh, just because I'm in there, I bought a new belt for the power steering and a new belt for the alternator. Those need to be checked. I have a new thermostat. I have a new radiator cap. I have a new thermostat housing and gasket. I have a new fuel filter and I also have a new air filter since all that stuff needed to be replaced. And luckily most of this stuff didn't really cost me much but it's something that it's good to it's good to replace stuff like that. And another thing that you need to do before you put the cooling system back because the lower hose runs right here is Play around with the fuel lines. Now, this, <laughs> I 
anyway, it's funny. This is a, I believe a newer style pump and does not have a return. Um, these cars came with a return. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the inline filter that was put in here. I mean, I think that's a decent idea. Uh, another thing is I'm gonna replace all this fuel line. I don't know how old it is, but judging by the piece that I already removed off the pump, it looks pretty old and that's not a place where you want gas to be leaking right next to your header. So it's basically just a maintenance thing, but I want to get it done and I want to get it done right. Here's a tip though, get a pair of ice grips with some rubber hoses on them and clamp the line shut, that way you don't have to deal with much fuel leaking out. We have the lower radiator hose in and hooked up, the transmission cooler lines are in and hooked up, the fuel line is in and hooked up. I decided to put the filter after the pump. It was before, which was causing all kinds of clearance issues. But the plan is to have it sitting right about here once it's all hooked up to the carburetor. I still have to trim the edge that goes to that. That way it's not touching anything or rubbing on anything metal. And it's better off that way. Before I butt up the cooling system and fill it up, I have to show you guys what came out of it. This is part of the reason why I ended up flushing out the block is because, just look how gross that is. Also, you can see a little gap. So it obviously wasn't shutting all the way either. And it's really, really, really gross. Easy thing to replace, it costs like three dollars. Done. Well, it's the end of the day, and I got a lot done today. I decided to ditch the stupid metal, I don't even know what to call it, crap fan. And this fan and fan clutch, which are good, actually came out of a uh, parts car. It came out of the car that I pulled the engine out and made a video of. But hey, free parts are good. The cooling system is topped off and for the most part all brand new. A trick for doing that, I showed you on the 77, but if you take this heater hose off and then fill with the radiator cap, the air will escape out here and once coolant starts coming out here you know you're pretty much full. So I also put on the new belt. We got a new power steering belt and a new alternator belt. I also got a correct cap for the power steering which has fluid in it so I'm hoping it works because it didn't whine whenever we were running it. I haven't tested it yet. It might need work, who knows. But that's about it for today. Hopefully soon I'll get the carb kit that I ordered in the mail, be able to put the carburetor back on, and then we can actually run this for long periods of time. We can also check the transmission fluid. But here's the crazy part. I looked at the brakes today and they actually work. So there's a possibility I could drive this car the next time I make a video. Yeah, I'm going to drive it with the interior looking like that. Thanks for watching, guys.